Hello, this is Lincoln Easley here, and today we are going to be going through uh, reloading and during, after, and mistakes that are made. This is mostly on mistakes that are made when reloading. Some are very critical mistakes, some are very minor mistakes. And I'm going to go through and talk about mistakes that I've made when reloading that I had to go and correct, that I was able to catch and others that have actually happened to me while I was shooting in competitions when reloading. So I'm going to go over everything right here and how this whole thing works and just go through. You have four components. You have your primer, you have your shell casing, you have your bullet, and you have your powder. So those are your four components that you're dealing with and you got to make sure everything is proper when you're doing everything. All your numbers are right. Now, one mistake I've actually had made before, I had to undo, putting a primer in upside down. It happens. Uh, I'm not sure what would happen if you try to shoot this, but most likely my educated guess, it's not going to work. It's not going to shoot. Nothing's going to happen. You're going to wreck a primer. Truth is, I wouldn't even want to find out. But most likely, I have a feeling it's just going to be a bullet that's not going to shoot. Nothing's going to happen. Another mistake is um, having damaged shell casings. Uh, one thing I would say, don't take shortcuts. Don't try to straighten that out and try to reuse it. If by some chance you do start, try to fix this, the only thing I would ever use this is a dummy bullet. But as of right now, I'm using this. I actually purposely put that in upside down just to show what would happen. Now, there's a thing with a primer. I call it the Goldilocks theory. And the reason why I say that is you don't want it too far in, you don't want it sticking out, you want it just right, you want it right in the middle. And a good example of this is if you look at this primer right here, it's nice and flat. If you were to take this on a flat surface, it would go nice and smooth. That's what you want. Now, right here, once again, I purposely didn't sink this in far enough. If you notice, it rocks. It rocks around, it doesn't sit right, it, doesn't, it will not sit flat, it's not flush. So there's what I call the revolver test with 45 Colt. So I'm gonna take a 45 Evil Roy revolver. I'm gonna show that it is empty. Now the thing with the revolver is the only way that this is gonna shoot if you have a full cock, it will shoot. So these are loaded rounds ready to go. We are not putting loaded rounds in it. I'm putting just the shell casing with the primer in it. And I'm gonna show you a test that I do with a revolver and all it is is a spinning revolver spinning that cylinder around and around so we're going to take a shell casing you put it in and then you're going to spin it all the way around now right there we had one that was damaged that has a seat that's a primer's not in all the way so what i have to do is you have to take that out and we're going to pull it out just like this and there we go so there's our seated primer that's not all the way in. Now we're gonna put one in that is all the way in. And we're gonna go through, we're gonna reinsert our cylinder, put it back in place. Now, just because it's not seated all the way in, just because you haven't done it, doesn't mean it's an easy fix. I can easily just put it right back in the press, and it's good to go. So now we have one that's flat, nice and flat. We're gonna put that in. So we're gonna put that inside there. And we're going to spin it. And you see how it spins all the way around without a problem. So that's working good. That's a good one to work with. Now, what happened to me one time was when I was competing, I didn't have that in all the way. It got stuck in the middle of the match. And I had to, lit to in combat action shooting, you have to literally take your gun, you have to set it down. And however sh many sh live shots are in there, what counts as a misfire and you would lose those points. And that could be a lot of points to lose. I actually had it one time happen with a rifle and I had a misfire in the rifle because I had a squid bullet that got stuck in there and I ended up missing like 10 shots. And that happens sometimes. So the next step to this that you're gonna to wanna to check for is your powder weights. And a good example of this is right here. I have my powder, so that's at 4.3 grains of powder. So for running this type of powder right here, 
I'm gonna have to have this powder between uh, 6.0 and 6.5 is about the ratio that I'm gonna be sitting at. Uh, this does have a hot at 8.0 and it has a cold at 5.9. I run the powder on the colder side because I don't need to send that projectile way out. So that's a really big thing to watch for. You don't wanna run it hot. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have a hot powder charge. So, uh, a really big deal on that is, so say I have this and I run a second charge. Now I got a second charge in here. And this is gonna go through and this is gonna weigh out at a, like a 12.7, uh, 12.8, which is not a good thing. You wanna get that out. And what I do, is I manually load all my my powder. All my powder gets manually loaded. This is how I do it when I'm reloading. I have all my shell casings set up. I, one, two, three, four, five, six. I check the powder weight. Then I go one, two, three, four, five, six, check the powder weight. One, two, three, four, five, six, check the powder weight. I go all the way down doing that. And that's how I do these. Then the next thing I do is I go through and I run a flashlight over it and make sure that they're all at an even powder weight when I'm doing this. This is a good way, it works really well for me. Then when I'm done, I would actually take the bullets and I put them right on top and then I go through and load them. And that is how I would go through this whole thing. After it's all loaded, the second thing we're gonna do is you're gonna, I do an average of five different weights of every bullet and they're going to run between they're going to run at three two five eight three two five nine they're going to have different weights on there but they're all pretty close to the same shell cases have different weights to them so i have like here i have two different shell cases that weighed at one one zero point nine and one one two point zero so i had different weights that's okay. You're putting that in to your calibration. Now, the reason why I'd be weighing these is I'm going to show you an example of what would happen if you put a double charge, and this is not if you're shooting, what happens if you put a double charge and what your waist would be. So we're going to take and we're going to purposely put it down here. So we're going to zero that out so we can go through, find out what our weight is. All right, so that is sitting at six zero so we're going to go through and ch check this again i like to check it twice to make sure we have an accurate reading because sometimes you may not have an accurate reading we're going to check it one more time see what our weight is oh, we got to go through all right we're going to check that again zero that out there we go now we're going to do it one more time put on there six one so we're still within that range. Now, we're gonna go through, we're gonna put that on there, and then I'm gonna take a bullet, and I put that, and put that on the scale, and that came out to 212.2. So, this is what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna add another charge to this. So I'm gonna purposely put two charges in this. So that way we can see what the weight is. Now we're going to put that on there. And with that weight, oh wait. So we got to go through and zero the scale out first. Again, because I weighed out two, 202, so that was when the scale was zeroed. So we're going to go through and do this over again. We're going to put our charge back on there. We're going to put that on. And with the shell casing, with the powder, it's 117.1. Now, I'm going to add the bullet to the, the scale, and the bullets weigh between 1950 and 206 is about the range of the bullets. So I mean, you're never going to have them exactly the same because they're cast bullets. So on the scale right here, it's at 323.2 with the charge that's in it. So... This is in the range that I have right here, which is 325, 3259, 3258, 32531, 
3270, which is the highest I have, which is okay, that's still in the range, 325.8. So those are all within that range, it's just very small numbers. Now, the thing is, is when you're weighing your bullets, that's what I'm doing is I'm weighing these bullets without seeing the charge. This is without doing a visual charge check. And this is how I do a visual charge check on my bullets and on my projectile before I go shoot. I'll go through and weigh all these. I'll spend hours doing them. If I see ones that are, have really high numbers or really low numbers, then I pull them out. So we're going to go through and we're going to add a second charge to this. We're going to put that on there. So we're going to see where our numbers are off. Now, right here, it's 32912. So we have a really high number here that should not be here. That, that's just not good. Now, what happens when I go and I take this out and we have no charge? So we're going to put that on there. Now it's 317.5. So now we have a low charge on there or no charge at all. And then you'll get a squid. So this gives me a range to watch for when we go and go shooting and everything and make sure we have the proper amounts the proper numbers. Because when I'm seeing stuff where it's 3.3.5, 3 that's not good. That means you have too high, you know, way too high of a charge where we have, need to have it at 3.2.3.1. Uh, three, three, so that would be a really good charge. This is how I do an examination on my charges to make sure my charges are good, make sure they're running smooth. So that way everything is going good. So this is a good exercise to get into. Nobody showed me this. I did this on my own. As a gunsmith and once told me, this is not rocket science, but you want to treat this like it's rocket science and treat this like it's gold. Because when you're reloading and you're doing all this, you have to make sure your projectiles are either perfect or close to perfect because if you do not have good projectiles, you do not have good things happening to your guns and yourself. And the last thing you want to do is you want to end up in the hospital going through all this and having to explain why your gun blew up or explain why you injured your hand really badly. You have to get it stitched up because there are people that ended up in the hospital because of high charges. And my theory is somebody else already made the mistake, learned from their mistakes. This is why... We have these numbers when doing this, so that way we can go through and follow our recipe books and follow everything that we have to do. So be happy, safe shooting, and be safe.